my name is Tanya and this is my channel Just Let Me Sew. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you are well wherever you are. It's been mm, a few weeks I think now since I last posted a vlog so apologies about the lack of vlogs, of videos. Um, life's just been quite busy. It's the summer holidays now so just trying to juggle childcare and work and sewing. It's, it's all quite busy at the moment but I hope you are well wherever you are. So today's video, I want to talk to you about um, one make that I have finished. This was quite a special make for me and it certainly took me a few weeks to get that finished. Um, I also want to share a really special purchase that I made that I'm so excited about. It's beautiful, so, so excited. And then I'm going to be talking about my plans, my sewing plans for the summer. Probably a little bit ambitious, probably not going to make all of them, but those are my plans. So first of all, I finished making a dress for um, a very good friend's wedding that was this weekend just passed up in Manchester. And I had in my mind, I wanted to make a dress for her wedding, for her party. And I thought I'm gonna make up a pattern that I've already made before. So I don't have to worry too much about the fitting and the adjustment and everything because I've already made it. And I went for this pattern which is McCall's M7974 and you can make it in different variations there's a long sleeve version which has sort of like um, a bell sleeve at the bottom um, you can make just a normal straight long sleeve version you can do a shorter length um, with the I think it's actually no it's cinched in it's tied in with little ties or you can do a sleeveless option as well. And they do also have an option to do a little collar, which I think is shown on version D, which you can't really make out very clearly, but there is a, a little collar. And it has this uh, quite plunging V-neck and then a panel, a panel along the, the middle section. And you can go for a version that hits on the knee, or you can go for the longer version, which is sort of like a, not maxi, um, a midi length, I suppose. Um, so I will insert a picture of my dress that I made up. Um, I went for a sleeveless version, thinking it's summer, it's gonna be warm. Um, the weather was actually pretty good on the day. It was due to rain, but it didn't. The weather forecast changed the morning and it was an outdoor party. So we were really, really lucky. It was beautiful weather, not a drop of rain for us. So the sleeveless version went quite well. I did wear a jacket with it as well. Not a me made jacket, just a, a shop ready to wear jacket. And I just wore it with trainers because it was sort of a, a casual-ish wedding. So I'll also show you the dress in real life. Now, please forgive me. I have literally just got this out of the laundry. I've washed it after the weekend, haven't had a chance to iron it. So it's looking very creased, but here it is. And I've, as I said, gone for the V-neck version, sleeveless, and I finished it off with lovely little shell buttons here. Now I did make a few alterations to this pattern. So if you watch my last vlog um, where I did a collaboration with Erin from Erin Sews, you'll see that um, I have found with the big four, when they get you to do a sleeveless version, they don't really get you to do a proper adjustment to it. So what I find you have to do is raise the arm side a little bit under here, otherwise it's gonna finish too low and also bring it in a little bit more on the shoulder as well, like that. So that's what I did with this to get a nice, a better fit, a more comfortable fit. So I did that. I've also raised the neckline a little bit. So to do that, um, you do have to make sure if you're gonna raise the front bit, you also need to raise the facing. This is finished with a facing on the inside there. You could work around it just by um, crossing them over a little bit higher. It's going to be hard to show you on this fabric because it's so busy. But you can see there that I've managed to get my 
mid panel section meeting up bang in the middle there so it meets spot on those two sections line up if you cross them over higher up you're not going to get them meeting one's going to be higher than the other which i didn't really want so i did redraw that bit um i would have liked to have made the dress a little bit shorter um i was really rushed finishing this up as i said it took me a few weeks to get this made up and with family visiting and other things going on, it was really down to the wire of when I'd be able to get this finished. So I finished it off and then I thought it is a little bit too long, but I just didn't have the time to shorten it anymore. So I just left it like that. But I think I'll probably go back and take it up maybe a good two or three inches. But I love this dress. Now the fabric is from Lamalzi Fabrics and it's a Rachel Parker fabric and it's called Sea Glass, I believe. If they still have it in stock, I will link it down below. It was probably the most expensive fabric that I have bought, certainly this amount of expensive fabric I've bought. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it was, but what I would say is it was worth every penny because I have never worked with a viscose like this before. Viscose can be quite slippery, it can fray, it can feel quite delicate sometimes, but this is beautifully soft, really, really soft. Um, when my mum touched it, actually, she thought it was sort of like a silk. It's really lovely, really good quality. So I would really recommend it. And that pattern is brilliant. I love all the different shades of, of that fabric, of the colors rather. I love it. So I would really recommend it. Um, I bought three meters of this and I would say that was cutting it fine. It was quite close. I did do quite a long dress, which on reflection, in hindsight, I didn't need it to be that long. So I could have saved a little bit there, but I did also go for the sleeveless version. So just be warned, if you do like that pattern, I would say the fabric requirements on the packet are accurate. So it is quite a, a fabric hungry pattern. I would like to now share with you a really exciting purchase that I treated myself to. So you probably already know the amazing Adam Sews. He makes up the most beautiful, beautiful quilted items and in particular caddies. And I have seen him talk about his caddies for a long time and it's been on my wish list of something to treat myself to. So I thought when I get my first paycheck from my new job, I'm going to treat myself. So when my sister was visiting from Scotland, she helped me go through lots of Tula pink fabrics and pick out the ones that I liked. Adam said he's pretty much got most of the Tula pink fabrics out there. So I just went through a couple of websites that he recommended. And this is what I picked for my caddy and it arrived today. And honestly, I was so excited opening it. I can't remember when I felt this excited about opening something before. And here it is. So I asked for like a hot pink and red combination. I love hot pink. So we've got these cute little bunnies with his lovely label, Adam Sews, the gorgeous binding, these straps. And then inside, he gave me a little surprise. If you've been watching my channel recently, you know we've got a new kitten. He put a little kitten in there for me. She's so cute. I'm going to have to think of a name for her. She's going to peek out at me whenever I go looking for my supplies in there. She's really cute. These lovely pockets. The zip on the side. Little handles. I just love it. It's brilliant. It's all so neatly made as well, attention to detail. He's just amazing. I don't, I do not know how you could make that. It's so beautiful, look at that little label, handmade. And he put for the pockets, one of the other fabrics that I said I liked, which has got these little um, purple foxes on it. So I said, I really love that one. So he's put that one, which was my second choice in the, in the inside. So. Just love it. Thank you so much, Adam. I'm going to treasure this forever. I need to get filling it with all of my sewing gadgets. Next up, I am going to run through some of my sewing plans for the summer. 
I have got a couple of breaks away planned, um, so I will have an excuse to wear some summery clothes, even if British summer doesn't hold out for that long. I'm going to have an excuse to wear something summery. So, first of all, I am planning on making a romper that I have had in my stash, the pattern, for about three, three years, I think. Um, I bought it and I had in my mind that I had already traced it out. But when I got the packet out, I haven't actually traced it. And I was prompted to get it out again by the lovely Angela from Devon Thread Tales because she featured it in one of her vlogs. It's a Butterick pattern, Butterick B6330. I think possibly at the time of filming this, Butterick patterns might be on sale or that sale might have finished now, but they were half price quite recently. And for this one, you can have, there's a couple of, actually three different options. You can make it as a dress and it's made from, it's stretch fabrics for stretch fabrics. So a long maxi length dress. You can do a short dress version that they've got here. It, it's also got a jacket. You can make a nice little easy stretch jacket there or the romper, so the shorts version or the long version. And I love how versatile that is because here she looks quite smart and here it's much more like daytime wear. And then again with the jacket, it makes it look quite smart as well. So I am gonna be making the shorter length version. As I said, it is stretch fabric. So it says pull over dress and pull on jumpsuit fitted through bust uh, with a blue on bodice, elasticized waist and back neck slit with button and thread loop all have stitched hems so i'm going to go for this shorter version and i didn't want to go out and buy new fabric for this and because i'm making the shorter length version i thought i might just have enough fabric in my stash and i have found this fabric that i got a long time ago from pound fabrics it was one of their cheaper ones about two pound fifty a meter and I have made myself a little um, bodysuit out of it so I've got enough of this left this black with these sort of um, khaki splodges on it so I'm going to make that the second item I want to make up is something that I have already made two of so my last vlog where I did my collaboration with Erin from Erin Sews we sewed up this pattern, which is New Look 6434. And I have cut out another sleeveless version and it's already cut out here. I'm gonna be using this lovely blue animal print fabric, which I had left over. I made a Rita dress out of this. So it comes together quite quickly. Um, and I thought, well, it's fresh in my mind. I'll cut out another one. It's nice, versatile, easy top to wear. You can dress it up or dress it down. So I'm going to be making that one. Hopefully that won't take me too long to make up. Another pattern I have had in my stash for probably the same amount of time as the romper is a simplicity pattern. And this is simplicity 8146. And it's got like, um, um, like a mummy and mini me version thing going on and you can even make one up for for a doll as well if you really wanted to so three possible sizes and you can do it as the sort of play suit version with the trouser legs or they've also got it as a maxi dress version so two options for you there this one is for woven so batiks chalet chambray cotton types linen types silky types jersey um and it is doesn't have any particularly tricky fastenings it's just a pull on and you need some elastic cord for button loop at the back and it's got elastic around the waist so i am going to make this one up i hope um looking at the packet what i find sometimes with big fours is it's really worth having a really close look at the model to see how it fits. And I think if I look closely enough there, it looks like that arm sign might come down quite low. I'm gonna have a look at the pattern pieces to check on that. Because if it is quite billowy there, I don't want it to end up being a bit too baggy there. So something to think about there. 
And the fabric that I want to make it up in is one that my mum very kindly surprised me with. She went down to a fabric shop in Worthing and saw this lovely fabric. It's a chambray with these lovely flowers on it. And she got me, I think it's two metres of this, so I should have enough to make that play suit. If I can't make the full trouser length, I can go three quarter length. I'd be quite happy with that. So nice and summery. Hopefully get around to making that one up as well. Moving on to what I hope would be quite a quick win is a pattern that I have made up quite a few times and I've made it up as a play suit version before and it's a vintage pattern. I don't know if you might be able to find it on eBay still perhaps. It is style 4129 and it is um, a pinafore jumpsuit and it also includes a pullover top a loose fitting pinafore or jumpsuit which has low scooped neckline, deep armholes and patch pockets. Suggested fabrics, cotton, cotton jersey, linen, denim. Um, and for this one, if you do happen to dig it out, if you like the look of it, it really is a very low scooped neckline. So if you wanted to wear it without a t-shirt, you would need to raise that neckline. And also the arm side does go down really quite low. So you'd want to raise that as well if you didn't want to wear anything underneath it. So I am planning this time on making up the dress version. Um, I haven't got a fabric in mind for it just yet, but I'm thinking it could be a quick win because I've made it up before. I do make one adaptation to this. The pattern has you cinch it in at the waist with a belt but I like to add elastic to that. So I make a little channel and add in some elastic to that there. So that's the, the difference that I make. So I'm thinking, quick win, might be able to get that done in time for my, my little holiday. Going back to Erin Sews, I saw she had made up this next pattern that I want to make up and it is simplicity. It's a Mimi G pattern and it's simplicity S9740. And it's a jersey stretch dress, which has this collar here. I just like the way it looks really easy to throw on with a pair of trainers, quite easy to wear. I don't really wear dresses very often, but I think this might be a nice casual option. Um, so I have some cotton interlock fabric um, that I've got in the wash at the moment. So I'm planning to make it up in this. It is a knit dress in two lengths, doesn't say any more than that. Stretch knits only, such as double knit, interlock, jersey, lightweight, ponty, and you need some lightweight fusible interfacing for it as well. I think I would probably go for, I think, this length. Definitely just below the knee. I would. The final pattern that I want to make up, I have had on my list for a really, really long time. And I bought this when I won my prize with So Essential. And it is the Cali shirt by Closet Core. And it's got some really beautiful design features, this one. You can have, um, let me read out what it says. So view A is cropped with wide faced hem. View B, the longer version, is tunic length shirt inspired by classic men's Oxford. And view C, um, which is basic, I think it's this one actually, is longer. View C is a stylish shirt dress with a high low hem. All the versions feature a subtly curved yoke, short dolman sleeves with arm cuffs and a dramatically curved hem. Personalise your cali with standard or band collar an optional breast pocket, an inverted or box pleat and a button popover or hidden placket. So loads of different style options for you there. I like this length. I think I might lengthen it a little bit, but I really like that curved hem at the back. That's really pretty. And I like that collar as well. So that is, and I've got two fabrics in mind for this. The first fabric is this cotton that I got from Gold Fork Road. And I've shown this on one of my fabric haul videos a while ago. I love this pattern. It's quite different to what I would normally go for. Lots of greens, orange isn't really a colour I go for much, but I really liked the bold geometric print of this. It's lovely cotton. I think it's a cotton, cotton lawn perhaps, but it's got like a satiny feel. 
but beautiful and that will be really really good for the summer so I'd like to get that made up for when I go away um, hopefully it won't be too involved to make if you've made the Cali before do let me know down below is it a tricky make is there anything I need to look out for I'm sure there will be a sew along somewhere closet core usually have sew alongs for their patterns to, to help you a little bit and the second version that I want to make is this gorgeous gorgeous fabric godmother fabric that I got at the uh, knitting and stitching festival whichever the one was that was in March and it's this gorgeous gorgeous fabric and um, it's got like fuchsia hot pink and orange again orange isn't really a color I go for but that's the second fabric that I've got it in so something is inspiring me to go for orange so I love that. That's going to be such a fun holiday top to have, perhaps to wear out on an evening. Beautiful. Um, I think the composition is a viscose linen. It's definitely got some linen in it. I don't, I got this from Emporia Fabrics. I don't know if they still, still got it in stock, but I will link it down below. I know that um, Jenny from Jenny, Jenny Stitches featured it in one of her vlog so if she's still got it I will link her down below as well but I'll try and find somewhere that's got it if you like it but that is just beautiful I've got a meter and a half of that so that should be plenty to make myself a version of that really lovely I just want so those are my pretty ambitious plans for summer sewing bearing in mind my first little breakaway is in two weeks time so I'm gonna have to get sewing pretty quickly if I want to make any of those items up I have already got one of them cut out so there's a chance I might get that one done that's everything from me today if you have enjoyed the video please do give me a thumbs up and if you would like to subscribe that would be amazing I was so excited last week to realize that I have now hit 3,000 subscribers which I was so so happy about thank you so much to everyone that has subscribed and watched my videos I really do appreciate it it's fantastic being part of the YouTube community I have loved interacting with everyone that's commented on my videos I love having the chats particularly seeing people who watch my videos regularly and replying to them and having those conversations it's fantastic so thank you so much if you are one of the people that has subscribed it's just fantastic thank you very very much if you haven't yet subscribed please do consider subscribing because it it really does help my channel and it also is lovely to have you along with me watching these videos i hope you are well wherever you are and that you are managing to get on with some sewing as well and enjoying some nice weather, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.